Welcome to All God's People, the Camp Meeting Edition. I'm Connie Vanderman Jeffrey, and there is nothing I love talking about more than camp meetings and convocations. We have a rich tradition in the Pacific Union of the best and the largest camp meetings in history. In fact, it was at a camp meeting in 1873 in Yountville that the first California conference was officially organized with seven churches and 253 members. Pioneer missionary J. N. Loughborough was elected the first conference president. As we grew as a church, so did our camp meetings. Look at this picture from 1922. The largest Adventist camp meeting ever held was in Los Angeles, August 31 through September 10, 1922. Now I had to go to the dictionary to discover the difference between camp meetings and convocations. And it's really quite simple. A convocation is a large formal assembly of people with synonyms of gathering, assembly, meeting, conference, and congress. Well, camp meeting means a religious meeting held in the open air or in a tent, often lasting several days. Like so many Adventists, I have so many fond memories of camp meetings, which included traveling with my mom and dad to camp meetings all across North America. We have lots of camp meetings and convocations to tell you about coming up this summer in our union. Arizona is just finishing up their Hispanic camp meeting, which ran June 19 through 24. And Central California is getting ready for one of the highlights of summer, the 10-day SoCal camp meeting, July 13 through 22. And in Nevada, Utah, there's the Tahoe camp meeting, July 31 through August 5, in one of the most beautiful settings of the Pacific Union. Northern California has Ignite, beginning next week, June 28 through July 1 at Pacific Union College and Redwood Camp Meeting in Redcrest, California, July 20 through 29. Southeastern California has several upcoming camp meetings. Black Ministries at the Riverside Convention Center, July 7 and 8. Cala Mesa Church for four Sabbaths in August, August 5, 12, 19, and 26. Loma Linda University Church, August 5 through September 2. Loma Linda Filipino Church, November 3 through 5. And last but not least, Southern California Conference is hosting their first one-day convocation in over 16 years at the historic Greek Theater in Hollywood on September 23, 2017. Go to aliveconvocation2017.org to find out more. The theme for the convocation is Alive, a journey to health and hope. For more than 100 years, the Seventh-day Adventist Church has been conducting camp meetings a time of spiritual renewal for our members and our guests. At Southern, we recently found these vintage pictures from the 1920s and 30s and the 1970s and 80s. These images conjure up memories of a simpler time. Picnics on the camp meeting grounds, youth tents, great themes, fun entertainment for the young people, and dynamic spirit-filled speakers. Times have changed, dear friends, but the message has not. We still have this hope. And now, a message entitled, The Good News from our President, Elder Ricardo Graham. I don't consider myself a news junkie, but I do like to stay informed. More and more, however, it seems there really is nothing new about the news. It's the same old story, man's inhumanity to the man, the struggle against nature, the latest war, and so on. It comes with different details, but really, it just repeats the sad story of our fallenness. None of this is surprising to students of the Bible. After all, Paul wrote in 2 Timothy 3.1 that in the last days perilous times shall come. How can we live in this world without being overcome by the wickedness? I think God's gift of grace is the answer. Paul writes in Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, For it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. We can't earn salvation. We have earned death. We are saved by the grace of God. Keeping the law does not save us. The law serves as a point of reference. It shows, it tells, it teaches, and it informs, but it doesn't perform. It reveals the character of God, but the law does not rescue us from sin. Grace is more than the free will forgiveness of God that makes us acceptable to His holiness. It teaches us to yield to God. Grace empowers, energizes, enthuses, and gives us the ability to live for God. While we hear and see the bad news in media reports, we live with the knowledge of Christ's empowerment by grace. Living is grace, 
is what makes all God's people ready for whatever happens because we're focused on God. We cling to the gospel and the gospel is always good news.